Take one. All right, this is gonna be fun. I have notes. Feel professional. I have to memorize this shit? What is this? A little Judy. It is pride. May as well keep it. See, now this is the bait and switch right here. You think you're coming for a costume tutorial, but you're actually getting a little bit of political activism. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Tyler M. Holland and I'm a costume designer in Brooklyn, New York. If you're watching this right now, it's the third week of June. We're rounding into the fourth week of June and that means it's Pride Month. And if you're watching this video outside of June, that's totally okay. It can still be Pride Month every day in your heart. Today, we're doing our third video in a series of four for Pride Month. And don't worry about it if you missed the other two videos. They're gonna be in a link at the end of the video. I stated it before my past videos and I'll state it again because it bears repeating. Pride started out as a riot. And specifically this year, as with any year, I'd like to really bring our attention to Marsha P. Johnson, who was there and kicked off the Stonewall riots in the first place. In today's political climate, I think it's really important to celebrate and highlight her inclusion and leadership in the Stonewall riots. We love you, Marsha. And next week, a little sneaky clue, I'll be celebrating you in the best way I can do as a costume designer. Let's continue to fight for our rights and fight for what makes us us. And let's continue to lift up our brothers and sisters in the POC LGBTQA plus community. Community. And with that, let's get into the rendering. All right, let's get into this week's costume design. Today, I'm going to be rendering a piece inspired by the T of our LGBTQA plus acronym. The T in the LGBTQA plus acronym stands for trans, and I've decided to depict our trans brothers and sisters this week as ringleaders in the world's most fabulous circus. I've said it before, but the starting place for any Tyler M. Holland rendering is going to be the underpainting of skin tones. Underpainting, in case you haven't heard it before, is the term we use in the industry to describe the addition of the warm and cool undertones to aid in the shading and contouring of human skin tone. This is typically accomplished through a purple or blue tone for the cool parts of the skin and a pink or red tone for the rosier areas. Obviously, this can vary from skin tone to skin tone, but red and blue base for the underpainting tends to be a great starting place. Once done with the underpainting, I'm moving on to laying down a thin translucent pass of marker in our skin tones. In the case of our deeper skin tone, I'm actually using a non-Prismacolor marker, Potato, in the Shin Han Touch series. I found that the Shin Han series has really beautiful warm base browns and they tend to work better for our deeper skin tones. It does look like this one is about to be dried out unfortunately, so it's probably time to reorder. If you're going to render a vibrant makeup design and marker, I'd recommend leaving blank white paper where you want your colors to show through the most, like I did here. That way, you're not muddying the colors by mixing them with the skin tone layer. You can always buff the color out into the skin tone using a paler version of the main eyeshadow color. Okay, so I'm going to reveal one of my most favorite things to do in a costume rendering that was also the most terrifying thing for me to figure out, rendering shiny black leather. As you can see on the boots, what I went ahead and did even before starting the rendering was to outline all of the areas of bright highlight on the boots. The best tip I can give you on this is to simply look for images of people wearing shiny patent leather boots and really look where the whitest part of the reflection is. This will greatly help you when you go to develop your highlights and folds. The other tip to rendering shiny leather is to let go of any sense of blending that you have for all the other parts of the rendering. When rendering shiny fabrics and metallics, what really sells it is a quick shift from light to dark. 
If you'll notice here, I'm using a 40% warm gray, a 70% gray, and black, as well as the white of the page. I'm also not blending, and I'm allowing each tone to take up its own space. I'll go back over all of this with the black micron pen to add some tiny little details and perhaps a wash of the 70% warm gray over everything to take the white just back a little. But seriously, when rendering shiny materials, keep it simple. While we're here, I'd just like to pass on my favorite piece of art advice slash life advice I've ever been given. Once in elementary school, I thought I had ruined my artwork and went up to my art teacher, Mrs. Talton, and I asked her for a brand new sheet of paper. She turned to me and said, Tyler, mess up, fix up. As in, if you make a mistake, fix it. I've always taken this to heart, and now I've learned as an adult that sometimes in art or life, when we feel we've made an irreparable mistake, there's always a fix. And sometimes when we fix something, we find that the end product is actually better because of the mistake. I always thought this cute little phrase, mess up, fix up, was so deep until my mother, who was a teacher at the same school, told me how tight the school's budget was and probably my teacher couldn't give me another sheet of paper because of lack of funding. To which I say, good on Mrs. Talton for turning something into a great teaching moment. And also, we need to be funding our schools and the arts in our schools much better as a nation. For this red coat, I imagine it, the torso portion of the coat is woolen in nature, but the skirt is sheer georgette or chiffon, so it'll be extra flowy and we'll be able to see her gorgeous legs through. When rendering something sheer, the best technique I've found is to make sure you double up on the low lights and base color in all of the areas that would overlap. And then, the areas that would be seen as a single layer of sheer should be the lightest combination of low lights and base color. Okay, feathers. I seem to be doing them in each of these pride videos, and truth be told, I render feathers a lot because I have a natural proclivity towards showgirls. I went in depth on how to render an ostrich feather on my first video, the Lilac Breasted Roller Showgirl, so seek that video out if you want more info, but I'll tell you the best advice I have for rendering ostrich feathers is to start with the palest shade of your base tone and start to build in quick feathery strokes on that color with deeper and deeper shades. Also. Keep in mind that feathers are organic and shouldn't, for the most part, keep to one strict shape. Make sure to break your border with your strokes. Also, going back in with colored pencil or just a simple 2B pencil to add an even more thin feathery definition is always great. Alright, glitter. I know I talk about this in each rendering, but it's truly something absolutely tacky that I enjoy about my process and rendering style. Just a small brush with some white craft glue cleverly applied to only the areas of highlights and then a shake of super fine glitter can help you conquer the world. As for the rhinestones, I only use them to represent buttons or larger rhinestone motifs in beadwork, but when I do use them, I use just a teeny tiny nail art rhinestone and white glue to affix them. No sense in spending the money on the Swarovskis for this rendering. One of the final steps for any rendering is the background. This really sets our character in a time and place and helps illustrate how the costumes will work with scenery and lighting. If you've had discussions with your scenic and lighting design team, and by the time that you're doing costume renderings you should have, you should know the predominant color and feeling of the set. I highly recommend doing an abstract representation of it, as it will help sell the design as a whole package for the production. Alright, the final step, the signature. Just like that, our gorgeous trans performers are done. I like to think they're living their life proudly and fabulously in my imaginary queer circus.
Thank you so much for watching this week. I had an absolute blast drawing these characters. Like and subscribe for more costume related content. I'm going to upload more renderings and also I just finished filming the first in my conversation series with industry professionals. I spoke with an amazing dramaturg slash queer theory slash gender theory professor and I cannot wait to release this content. I have no clue how I'm going to edit it down from the two hour discussion to like a 10 minute format but we'll see. Literally everything she said was a gem. Oh also comment down below if you liked this. Comment down below if you have any specific questions about what I'm doing, my techniques, anything that you would like to see in the future. I can't wait to start doing things that you would like to see. I'm just over here producing things in a vacuum. Also just like comment down below and say hi, I like meeting new people. All joking aside, before I head out of here, I'd like to remind us to be incredibly prideful and also be diligent in our fight for equality, right? Let's always lift up our brothers and sisters in the POC LGBTQ community because as Fannie Lou Hamer said, Nobody's free until everybody's free. Signing off with all of my queer love, and I'll see you next week. Bye. Turn this camera off.